Hello, Professor Bright here. Welcome back to the Sunless Sea, where we are in a bit of a, a bit of trouble. We've unfortunately angered Salt again. I mean, I just had tomb colonists look at his place. I didn't think that that would piss him off, but uh, it did. And I took the liberty of looking up the requirements to lift the curse. It's seven secrets. So you can imagine I'm infuriated by what we did last episode. We had, oh, what was it, about five, six secrets already? I mean, we could buy some in Irem, but at this point it would take all of our money, and we still wouldn't have enough. So I've refit our crew so that we are maximizing pages, not going off the edge of the map. I'm not really going to do anything over here, just because I don't trust anything to not wound me or cause me more trouble. At the moment, my plan is we're going to go to the Nativity. And we are going to trade in some of these tomb colonists. Why? Because there's a chance that I get fragments or secrets or something out of it. Failing that, there is one other possibility. We could attempt to make another trip to the surface. We're going to go... Cons... Not Cons Glory. We're going to go to the Conate. We're then going to go all the way... Not to London. We can't go to London because that will kill our wife and child. We're going to go to the Cuman Canal. After stocking up on fu oh, fuel and supplies and it's going to be really expensive. But it's going to be fine. Because we will do that. And then we're going to get to the surface. Get more money. Go back to Irem. Buy a just ridiculous amount of secrets. Probably more than we need. Oh my god, why would you even be here? No. No. For God's sake, no. No. Maybe I can just sort of... No, I'm not going to risk it. Our fuel situation isn't great, neither is our supply situation. I was going to say we could use the aft cannon that I installed and see what that does to it, but... uh, No. 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 Now you may say that I shouldn't sacrifice the tomb colonists to these people, but my counter-argument, fuck you. Mmm, I'm infuriated by that. My counter-argument is that what's the worst that could happen at this point? I mean, really. Sure, I'll deliver your trinkets, why not? And some tomb colonists, enjoy it. I got one secret, one out of seven. Acquired. Okay. The glumness of the nativity is broken by the reds and golds of freshly hung banners. Spider-worshipping weavers and widows guide the traders in readying their celebration of gratitude to the generous neighbors that silently watch over them from the shadows. You've been to Venderbite. Perhaps this is doing them a favor. The emissary of spiders has a pair of strong traders load the unfortunate tomb colonists onto a rickety already well-stocked supply cart. It would be preferable not to be around when they wake up, but that seems unlikely. The emissary bids you join him on the cart, now so burdened that the only place to sit is on the coffins. A reward was promised, was it not? He says, settling himself down on a silk cushion. Come, the Assyrian masters demand an audience. Oh, no. No. If I get one wound, I die. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, um, okay. Okay, we'll pray that nothing here can wound me. If it can, fuck. Just, I try not to curse as much, but, uh, the feelings... Take the risk. Speak with the Emissary of Spiders. He seems a reasonable fellow. How did he come to be here speaking for a Council of Sorrow Spiders? Huh. Life is but a web, a many-stranded thing of beauty. He gently bids rather than drives the elderly horse to a faster walk. He speaks of following the perfect geometry of a spider's web to its natural conclusion. End of the day, his mind was ensnared by one as effortlessly 
as it might have caught a fly. I confess, however, it did take a while to be talked into the harvesting. He adds, gesturing to his empty eye sockets, chuckles to himself. Ha, ah, the ignorance of youth. Oh my. Indeed. So that was purely optional and kind of a waste of time. Got some more fragments, though, and, uh, yeah, we're still a ways away from getting a secret from that. Anyhow, the Great Crossing. Between the Nativity and the Grand Spider Council of Savior's Rocks is a bridge of webs coated in thick sands to allow passage between islands. Oh, these... bridges. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. You may wish to avert your gaze for a moment. The Emissary of Spiders carefully undoes his blindfold, revealing two hollow scabbed eyes. Unbidden, the Sorrow Spider on his shoulder crawls across his face, stabbing one leg into each with a squelch. Just for a moment, the emissary's face flickers with the euphoria of a new disciple of Prisoner's Honey, but only for as long as it takes to shiver. His normal, polite countenance returns as the cart rolls onto the webbed bridge, taking you high above the Black Z. There is a spider steering this gentleman right here. Lovely! Just, just lovely. Wonderful. Why not? Of course. Uh, I'm not going to take this high-risk challenge. I... I would, but at the same time, I don't know what this is going to do to me. I need my terror relatively low to make the trip back, so... Sorry. The Web of Stone. The cart approaches a long-ruined citadel, little but a maze of foundations still recording a time before it became the, Den the Demesne of the Sorrow Spiders. Hmm. Oh, is that actually pronounced Demain? I think I read a while back that that's actually pronounced Demain, or something to that effect. Well, not important right now. Sorry, distracting myself. A little bit nervous myself. And so is the captain now. End of the road, the clicking of sorrow spiders is nigh intolerable by the time the cart pulls up by the web of stone. The emissary of spiders pauses for a moment to carefully detach the juvenile and replace his blindfold. Absently, he touches and tastes a drop of lingering blood, savoring the sting of poison. Wonderful. You will be summoned when the irascible masters are ready. Until then, please do enjoy our hospitality. He pauses, turns, licking his fingers clean. I do, however, urge you to mind your manners in this place, and of course to be most careful where you choose to sit, hmm? Oh, well, this is just a... Yeah, yep, mm-hmm. Not gonna have nightmares tonight? No, no, sir. No. Oh. Oh, ew, 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 ew. Okay, so, anyway. The last remnants of an ancient citadel, now home to the Spider Council of Savior's Rocks. Eyeless weavers and widows busy themselves tending to the spiders and their tree of seasons. Showing neither interest or concern at your presence, you will be summoned. I could spy on the weavers and widows. This seems like a terrible choice. The spy on the blind is no challenge, but the glares of the sour spiders all around make it clear that while here, you'll never not be under observation. Why not? A Z story. Lovely. A family of red and green. The cultists politely ignore you as you watch them at work. The weavers in red, tending the webs. The widows in green, caring for their masters by reducing grizzly foodstuffs to paste and feeding the more senior members of the Spider Council by hand. If there is any reason for these assignments, it is impossible to tell. Certainly there is an assortment of male widows and female weavers amongst the cultists' ranks. Perhaps the sour spiders have as much interest in human gender as in spider gender. Hmm. Fair enough. I mean, it's a 62% chance. Why wouldn't I spy on the Grand Spider Council? It's a group of weavers and widows is quietly discussing something. You might be able to listen in. They do not appreciate outsiders trying to steal their secrets. They guard them ferociously. Ah. But I could try again. One more. Oh. But I mean... Why not? Come on. Thank you. That was not worth it. 
Before the harvest, an orchard must grow. They speak of a chaos brought under control by a spider council, formed from the blinded eye of a great Z-beast. They speak of the strained partnership it maintains with those who could so easily be enslaved. They speak of the tree of epochs, to be birthed in forbidden light, its branches stretching throughout the neath to become the perfect geometry of sorrow. Well, this is a cheerful place. Um, You know what, let me see this tree of seasons, the heart of the Spider Council. Few have laid eyes upon it, and most of those have said eyes ritually removed to birth new sorrow spiders shortly afterwards. Ah. Pride of the Sorrow Spiders. Branches of web hang in their thousands from the colossal statue of some being as far from an angel as an angel from a man. The Spider Council has made its home in the chipped-out eyes, surrounded by its lessers and a precious collection of ensnared unfortunates. Hundreds of these captives dangle in silk cocoons, the sane and still living tended to just enough to serve their full measure of both use and suffering. Oh. I mean, I'm tempted. I mean, I... You know what? Hospitality of the Sorrow Spiders. A polite widow indicates her fellow disciples' willingness for you to take a meal with them. Hooray! A feast of gods. The Sorrow Spiders often resort to cannibalism when food is low. It's on occasion the weavers and widows' is privilege to share that bounty, that they may be a greater part of the whole. At least the poison has been removed, and the legs are surprisingly effective when pressed into duty as impromptu toothpicks. Yay, further investigate this tree of seasons, I want to know more. And I don't want to know more, oh dear. There's no escape but death. The captives have long since ceased moaning, though some still quiver as sorrow spiders crawl across their bodies, milking their secrets. A venturing cartographer who traveled too far east, a lady of means from a voyage 18 years prior, the captain of the wrecked ship Nocturne, a broken devil old enough to have forgotten the smell of brimstone. Their eyes long since harvested to birth the sorrow spider's progeny. They hang immobile in darkness, dreaming of oblivion. So sorrow spiders can take down a devil. That is impressive. Tell me of this new initiate. A naked young man lies on a stone platform. He is shaking hands, squeezed tight by his brothers and sisters-to-be. An eye for an eye, said the spider to the fly. There's no chanting, no singing. There's just a low-pitched noise from the cultist's throat as a sorrow spider climbs up the initiate's body. He quivers as it reaches his face, drips of excited poison dripping into his lips. Strong, caring, but above all else. Firm, fingers peel back his eyelids and hold them wide. A scream, a mouth silenced with bundled cloth and embrace. A note raised high and loud until the tree of seasons itself seems to shake in the cacophony. A widow gently kisses his new brother on the forehead, wrapping a silk blindfold around his hollow eyes. Well, thank you. I am just so happy to have been a part of this. Um. Rest. There's a little to be had. Every time you close your eyes for more than a moment, you feel the hairs of a sour spider on your skin or exploratory rub of a mandible against your eyes. But time slowly passes even so, and eventually time is what it is. Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha. Oh god, please get me out of here alive. It's time you've been called. From the eyes of the statue pour a poisonous conclave, a thousand lesser sorrow spiders perching on every rock, brick, and outcropping. The emissary of spiders rises from his meditation at the base, his robe festooned with the most senior members of the council that they might whisper their will in his ear. They speak, of course, most eloquently, in fact. That does not mean they will lower themselves to speak to you. Not directly. Excellent, excellent. The emissary of spiders bows slightly. My mephitic masters bid you welcome. I believe we have business to discuss. Oh. The emissary of spiders stands before the tree of seasons, vast ranks of his masters, sitting still as the rocks on its webbed branches. The subject of their interest, the legendary lost ship, the Nocturne. This is about the secret of the Nocturne. The Emissary of Spiders patiently explains what service his masters require. A simple matter for one with perception. Eighteen years ago, the Nocturne was lost in the vicinity of Savior's Rocks. It's a story every Zailer knows, the tale of the webbed ship and its vanished crew. 
We seek a certain the emissary of spiders pauses, smiles. Pardon the secrecy, but I fear discretion must be at the heart of our endeavor. Suffice it to say, there is a matter of the gravest importance tied to that ship, and you shall, if you are deserving of this commission, most assuredly know it when you see it. Bring it here to us, and you shall be most richly rewarded. His tone is warm and words sincere. He has clearly practiced much to make them so. Oh? Oh, the Tree of Ages is their ship, is it? Interesting. A question. Why can the Sorrow Spiders not send their own vessel to handle this problem? Oh my, such pervasive propaganda. The Tree of Ages, the Emissary of Spiders, assures you that it's merely a tale one invented to scare children and brain-addled sailors, with no offense intended to present company, of course. After all, I fear even the Minikin Masters would struggle to operate such a vessel, if it did exist. As for we who are honored to serve, he taps his blindfold. I fear you do rather have the advantage on us there. We have a compact. I would demand more information. Why can't these spiders just tell me what they want? It is too delicate a matter for specificity. These are dangerous waters one never knows who might be listening, confides the Emissary of Secrets. Trust in the pernicious masters, that they would not ask for you to lack the necessary wisdom. That hardly suffices, but it, it's, it's clear that that's all you'll get. Oh dear. Well, we must accept then. <laughs> I have no other choice. Whether this is a task you actually intend to undertake or not, it would not be a wise one to openly refuse. There's more to this than there appears, but there's only one way to find out. A simple task, is it not? Says the Emissary of Spiders, no longer encumbered by his masters. He claps you on the shoulder. Do not, of course, neglect light to aid your search. Candles, yes, candles enough to scare away the ghosts and burn the very skies of verdant green. Mmm. Good. Great. A thief of silk, though? You see him trying to steal from the festival while pretending to gather new banners to hang. The sour spiders see all that happens in their domain. Their justice is swift and final. It's not a thing to be discussed, merely witnessed, for the future education of all who might violate their rules. Okay then, well, we were just hired by a bunch of spiders to visit a ship which I was under the impression contained a bunch of spiders. So, that's a thing. We also got one secret of the seven we need to save our wife and kid, which we will hopefully be doing next episode. Thank you very much for your time. Note the like, comment, and subscribe buttons below. Use them responsibly. And I will see you all soon.